Yeah, unfortunate uh, uh, that uh, I've gone through this whole episode again, um, uh, you know, but uh, at the same time, uh, uh, excited for Bruce and, and our players and our staff that uh, they get the opportunity to, to go play. Uh, I'll be disappointed uh, that I'm not there with the guys, but uh, at the same time, uh, I'm extremely confident in, in our players and the leadership of Bruce and Will and uh, that's why I've hired guys like Brian Steele and John Reynolds, guys that have been on the floor and coached before. Um, and now they, uh, uh, their abilities as uh, coaches uh, will come out and, and continue to support Bruce and, and as he's managed this week. Uh, um, you know, if you guys got questions for me about my situation, I'll be more than happy to answer. Uh, but out of respect to Bruce, He's been running practice. He's the one that has a feel for the players going into this game, not me, because I have not been around. Uh, so anything pertaining to LSU and basketball, um, you know, I'd rather you ask Bruce than me. All right, just a reminder, if you have a question, please raise your hand. And Dave, you can go ahead and get us started. Hey, guys, thanks for doing this today. Uh, first of all, for, for Frank, uh, just how are you feeling uh, with this this latest issue? And then uh, with Bruce, if you could kind of follow that by saying, when did you get the call and uh, how excited are you for this opportunity? Uh, I guess I'll answer mine pretty quick. Uh, Dave, I'm feeling uh, good now, uh, but this thing kicked my tail this time around. And uh, uh, I'm still congested. Um, and, uh, but, you know, physically I feel, I feel fine right now. Uh, just waiting to get out of isolation and, uh, you know, and then do all the medical tests and all the stuff that, uh, that comes with, uh, uh, you know, the after effects. Uh, uh, so, um, just, uh, um, uh, really, really frustrating. Uh, but at the same time, happy that, uh, uh, that I'm sitting here talking to you right now. Dave, do you want to ask that second part to Bruce maybe one more time? Sure. Uh, Bruce, thanks for doing this. Um, just when did you find out that you were going to be in the head coach's chair and how excited are you for this opportunity? Um, I think it was uh, Wednesday, uh, late night Wednesday, when Coach uh, Martin addressed the, the team uh, and, and the staff as well. And I'm excited. I'm excited for our players. Uh, we've, we've had a, a tough season. Uh, going through the adversities and uh, admit of the pandemic uh, that's going on now. So I'm excited for our guys. I miss a, a, a unbelievable opportunity. Anytime we get a chance to play a basketball game, uh, especially an SEC basketball game, uh, given the circumstances and the situations that, that have plagued our season, um, it's just a, a total excitement for the group. Next up is Michael. <clears throat> Hey, Frank, um, just just to clarify, you know, you're talking about how this has affected you this time. So have you tested positive for COVID a, a second time? Because I know you had tested positive back in May. And just how's how's your family doing? And is, is everyone OK? Uh, yeah, everyone in my family as well. I appreciate you asking. Um, uh, you know, Michael, I, I uh, contemplated how to handle because I don't like to make things about me because it's not about me. It's about our players. It's about our program. This is not a Frank Martin issue. Uh, but after thinking along the lines of how I, I need to manage uh, this moment, uh, I thought transparency is always, it's, it's always been one of my, I think it's my greatest gifts is that I'm not trying to hide in a bubble somewhere. Uh, and I think it's so important for so many out there to understand that, uh, this is the second time I, I go through this. Uh, the first time uh, I didn't kick my tail the way this one kicked my tail. Um, but, uh, but I think uh, as everyone continues to understand how this virus operates, I think it's important that we comprehend that, um, you know, I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm, I'm, you know, I've dealt with it on two different occasions. And uh, uh, so I think we all have to be extremely careful uh, and uh, I'm not I'm not here to advocate what others should do, uh, but I know my mom just got her first vaccine, and I couldn't be happier because I, I I wouldn't want her or, or or anyone dear to me to to deal with this virus the way it 
kick my tail this time around. Quick note for some of you who've asked to record, unfortunately, it's not letting me allow some of you to record. So I'm sure that Matt will get this out on our FTP just as soon as possible when we're done today. Next up is Colin. Hey Bruce, I guess just kind of take me through what the challenges are of trying to get a team ready to go um, for this kind of game and, you know, having to take your team on the road now and play a team. Yeah, Colin, I don't, I don't, necessarily say there's a challenge um, where we've been prepared. Um, you know, Coach Martin, like I said, prepares us daily, uh, weekly. So um, it's, it's next man up. Um, I guess the challenge is just, you know, dealing with the emotions of having, you know, having to play a game, you know, a week later after getting into a flow, you know, playing Texas A&M, playing good, and then, you know, being told, hey, we got to go on pause again. So uh, managing the emotions and, and managing it managing their feelings and getting them, getting them ready to go uh, is probably the biggest challenge. John Del Bianco. Bruce, do you know how many guys you're able to take on the plane with you and how many will be able to suit up tomorrow? I, I do not know the, the final answer to that. That's a, a Mark Rogers question as far as, you know, the injury report. Um, I just know that we had, we had 13, 14 guys, 12, 13 guys at practice yesterday. Um, and uh, it was a good practice. Pete? Sorry, sorry about that, everybody. Um, Frank, I, I'm guessing the frustration level with this has to be high for you simply because none of us were really sure, I thought, that you could get it a second time. And after you got it a second time, maybe you were protected, maybe you weren't. I mean, I'm glad you're feeling better for sure, but the frustration's got to be off the charts. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, Pete, it was frustrating uh, last week. Um, and then when this thing actually jumps on you and you feel like crap, uh, you just want to be healthy. And, uh, and uh, so I'm, I'm, uh, I feel really bad for our players. I feel bad for play, not just our team, players across the country right now. All you got to do is look on a nightly basis how many games are being postponed and rescheduled and uh, teams being told in a 24-hour window who a new opponent is. And um, that's not what college basketball was intended to be. Uh, this, this season was uh, – it's not the way it's supposed to be. Uh, I get it. Everyone's trying to make it work. Uh, so we can have a tournament. So, so, uh, so we, we can all feel like we did everything in our powers to provide opportunities to everyone that wants to play. Uh, but it's, it's uh, it, 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 as a coach, as a person that's trying to, uh, to guide young people to, to, to stay the course for a common goal. Um, it's, it, it, it gets really, really confusing sometimes uh, when you're dealing with these issues and, 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 it, and the inability uh, to, to, to make any sense out of this. Uh, that's, that's the part that gets really confusing right now, Pete. Thanks, Frank. Next up is Josh. Can you hear me now? Yep. Sorry, I these headphones are busted. Frank, I'm sorry, forgive me for being dense, but I just wanted to confirm you did test positive a second time. I tested positive the first week in May, um, and uh, and then I tested positive again last Thursday, and it was confirmed on Friday. Okay. And you're talking about the frustration and and how difficult this is to navigate. Do you advocate trying to finish this out? We've seen some women's teams put you know just say we've had enough. Do you think you guys that you guys should finish this out. As long as our players want to play, uh, it's my responsibility to help guide them get to the finish line. It's uh, um, uh, the reason that we did this to start with is because the players wanted to play. It's uh, uh, no one. I, I don't speak for other universities. I'm I'm speaking about us, our team. I'm not even speaking about other teams on our campus. I'm speaking about 
Frank Martin, his crew, and his players. Our guys want to play. And, and they, they, they have sacrificed tremendously to figure out a way to play. Uh, and as long as they want to play, it's, it's our duty to, to keep a sane mind and, and, and keep peace and faith in the right place and, and help them uh, line up and play in as many games as possible. Next up is Cam. Hey, Coach, kind of going along that same line, I know you said you're happy for the players that can get to play tomorrow night, but I just wanted to ask, with everything going on off the court this season with the three stoppages, is it becoming more difficult to find joy in the game? Are you guys still enjoying this? There's all the outside stuff kind of taking away your ability to enjoy the game of basketball this season. Uh, that's, that's why we keep showing up and, and practicing when we're allowed and keep playing when we're told that we can play is – is the love that we have for, for basketball and, and the love that we have for competing. And that's not going anywhere. Um, that, that, that's why we keep doing it. I mean, um, if, if we just utilize this as a mean, as if this was just a job, it, there's no love for it, it's just a job. Um, we all would have opted out, kept our salaries, kept our scholarships and, and lived really stress-free this year. Uh, but that's that's not the way we we go about it. Uh, it's not the way I approach it. It's never been a job for me. Uh, I've had jobs. I don't consider this a job. I consider this kind of a way of life uh, uh, that's that's an important part of my fabric. Uh, and our players, they don't come at it every day as they're being told what to do. Uh, they've chosen uh, to compete. And uh, that's 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 what makes it frustrating is that we've got a group of guys that love to compete, love the game. They love to be around each other in, in all these pauses. I've got an awesome staff, uh, you know, guys that just, like, make it a whole lot of fun to go to work with every day. And all these different pauses we've had has deprived us of being in each other's company, of, of being in each other's company while we all – uh, get to play and coach basketball. That's that's the part that's frustrating. But no, the the love for it doesn't go away. That's why we that's why we keep doing it. I don't want to speak for Bruce, but uh, that's why Bruce is excited about uh, what he's getting ready to do, which is lead our guys on Saturday because of that love for basketball. Next up is Dick. Frank, first of all, I'm sorry you're having to go through this again, and my prayers go out for a speedy recovery for you, though. My question is, the young man from Canada who recently signed, is this a young man that can, can help you all any this year? I would hope so. I mean, it's uh, uh, Bruce is probably better prepared. The young man got off a plane, and I got put in a, in a box. It's, well, bo that's a bad choice of words there. <laughs> I got put in a bubble. Let's put it that way. The, the, you get put in a box. That's not fun. Uh, but I got put in a bubble, so I have not been around him uh, other than obviously we, Chuck and I were, uh, were, were the ones that spent most of the time on the phone with him and his family and, and the recruiting process. And um, uh, Bruce has been the one that's had him at practice. Uh, I, I don't, I don't want to speak out of turn uh, because I have not been there to see what he's done this week. Uh, but the plan is for him to help us. I mean, that's why we brought him in right now. We we need um, we needed another big body in there. Uh, just uh, uh, obviously, we were short one when when Ariel chose to leave the team, and um, uh, and uh, I don't know if you saw our team the last two times we played, but with all the ins and outs and um, and the uncertainties that are out there right now. Um, uh, we, we could use another body and uh, he's not just a body now. He's, he's a talented young man that we think fits how we play. Uh, and uh, it's a huge advantage uh, when you can bring someone in and this year doesn't count against him. He'll, he'll be a freshman again next year. So um, gets to get in the weight room and practice and learn and play and hopefully help us this year. Next up is Phil. Okay. Uh, hey, Frank. Um, you know, I, I guess we could surmise that your program has maybe been hit harder than any other program in the country uh, with the COVID issue, considering the number of games that, that you've lost to this point. Uh, is, it just, is it just bad luck 
on your end or is there something that's not being done, uh, some protocols not being followed? I mean, how, how do you kind of explain the, the, um, the issues that you've had dealing with COVID as a program? Uh, on the contrary, Phil, I think because everyone did their job so well, uh, the people on campus that, that uh, uh, created the guidelines, uh, the, the way we, we handled stuff as a staff. And then at the end of the day, uh, by the way, the job our trainer, Mark Rogers, done. And then at the end of the day, um, our players, uh, you know, it, it, Phil, here, here's it, I, it's not my place to speak on other teams, other people. It's their lives. I, it's, I don't even speak on our own people from a private matter. Uh, but a lot of teams had majority of their players test positive back in August, September. So now the season starts and they're not even testing. Now they're starting to get outside that 150 day window and they're starting to get tested again. We had, you know, we, we had one positive test and it, we, it was deemed a false positive in September. And, and so on the contrary, complete opposite of um, uh, the question. It's the fact that everyone handled their business so well. Uh, the care was so good, the organization, the structure, the attention to detail by the players to stay out of harm's way and not, not be running around getting sick. Um, but unfortunately we took that trip to Houston and uh, uh, we, we just, it just, it got into our locker room. And when it gets into our locker room um, you know, it's, you got no idea how this virus spreads right now. No one does. There's a lot of theory. No one has a clue yet. Um, you know, and it got into our locker room. And when it got into our locker room, it's, it's, it's been impossible to contain. And, and, you know, like I said last weekend before, it, it's not like once one person gets it, everyone's quarantined and we're good to go. No, it, it's it, one person gets it. Then, you know, a week later you start again, another person gets it. Everyone gets quarantined again. Uh, you know, anyone that's outside that 150 day window, if they've had it and if they haven't had it, it, it is what it is. It's uh, it's 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 really, <coughs> it's really unfortunate. But you know, I just read Villanova just practiced yesterday for the first time since December twenty third. Uh, so it's it's not a unique problem to South Carolina. It's uh, it's pretty spread around. Mitch, coach, hope you uh, hope you're feeling better soon. Um, Bruce, I wanted to ask, ask you. Uh, obviously, you guys have been preparing for LSU. Um, they got the leading scorer in the SEC. He's a freshman, Cam Thomas. Um, how have you guys been preparing for that backcourt? Obviously, um, they have you know one of the more higher scoring backcourts in the uh, in the league. But um, also, this team has just been well rounded since SEC play has started. Yeah, Mitch, um, that's the that's the beauty of playing in the SEC. Uh, that's what our guys signed up for when they chose South Carolina to play against good players. Uh, good teams, well coached teams every every single night. Uh, so um, it happens to be LSU, and uh, like you said, they are very talented. But our guys are prepared uh, because of our mindset, the way we we train, the way we we go as a program. It's just the next team up. Uh, Cam Thomas is a unbelievable good player. Um, Trenton Wofford, Darius Days. Uh, Javante Smart, they've been they've been around, um, and our guys have seen them. We have we have we have sophomores and juniors have seen those guys before, so um, they're excited about the challenge. Um, uh, they I, the last couple of days uh, in practice, they've been excited about the challenge. Uh, uh, we're focusing on the details and and uh, the game plan, and we uh, we're going to take it as just as another SEC game, uh, and that's what that's what SEC basketball is about. Rick? Hey, Frank, first of all, my heart really goes out to you and your family. I hope you have a speedy recovery and I look forward to seeing you back on the sideline again. Uh, looking back at that Texas A&M game, I was really impressed with just how good the team look, look considering uh, the stoppages you had previously. And you're going through it again. Is there any way this team can really reach its full potential just because it seems like you're climbing up the mountain, then you slip back down and you have to start that, that, that rise again. Uh, I appreciate your words, Rick. And uh, God willing, Monday, uh, I'll be out of uh, uh, 
isolation and back where where uh, where I can be around people again. Um, but uh, I told you guys in the preseason, I like this team a lot. This team has a chance to be good. I, I, um, I, I unfortunately we we didn't get much credit for the first three games we played. It was just like ah, you know, here they go again. You know, we we Liberty's a real good team, and and um, and you know, you walk into a twenty thousand seat arena and there's six people in the stands, and it's the first time your players play in that environment. And we weren't ready to 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 make that adjustment uh, in the first half of that game, and it it got us. Uh, and then, you know, we beat a real good Tulsa team and then turned around and and went to play a top five team in the country in their building. And, uh, you know, we're up in the first half. This, this team can be really good. And um, we we, fought, we got some consistency in practice uh, with with even though it was only nine guys uh, for five straight days. And, and that led to us playing fairly well against uh, um, Texas A&M. And it was fun to play at home, uh, which is the other thing that that we hadn't had the opportunity until we got started again back at the beginning of January. So, um, I, 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 it is. It, I, I tell the players this all the time: to have any success at anything you do, you better have a sane mind and a strong spirit. And if you ever allow anything to impact your mind or your spirit, you got no chance of succeeding. So regardless of what's in front of us, regardless of how many guys uh, are cleared to play, if we get a chance to play, we got to have a sane mind and a strong spirit. And we cannot allow COVID to impact us in a negative way from that standpoint. We have to make sure that we're excited and that we get a chance to go play ball. And that's, uh, that's what we all signed up for. And that's why we're willing to deal with whatever inconveniences we're, we're, we're dealt with um, uh, because we, we want to play and, and the guys want to play and, um, they get a chance to play this week. I don't get the coach and that's frustrating. Uh, but I, but what makes me happy is that our players get a chance to go play because the reason we're doing it is for them. A few more here, Colin. Yeah, Bruce, I guess two questions for you. You mentioned kind of trying to keep spirits up and, and how's practice gone in that regard? How do you guys plan on doing that, especially with the late game on Saturday? And, and second of all, what have you seen from Trayvon Minot and how much of an impact do you anticipate them having uh, tomorrow night? Yeah, Colin, practice has been good. Um, you know, our, our culture, with Frank's, Frank's not there physically, but, you know, his his voice is still there because our culture is is the way is, is, is the way is it the way it is, um, you know, and so it's a, you know, it's another day in the office. I told the guys, you know, you can take the approach of, 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 of me as a substitute teacher, or you could take the approach of me as, as, you know, the next man up. And those guys respect me as a coach. They respect our staff. Brian Steele, uh, who was an assistant coach, John Reynolds, who's an assistant coach, Will Bailey, you know, ha has been around. So it's coaching in the building. So our guys, uh, it was just, you know, it was a, a focus. Uh, they were ready, uh, attention to detail. They were locked in and ready to go. And um, they're, they're ready to play. They're excited. You know, they're excited and I'm excited for them. And, and, and we're excited for them and we, we, we're excited to play. Um, as far as Trey, Trey Monat, you know, uh, that's a big old sucker, you know, and he, he came into practice and, and I, I talked to coach, I talked to Frank about him and I talked to Chuck about him. I love what he brings to practice, his energy, his spirit is high. He's always talking. He's engaged. Uh, you, 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 you tell him, I mean, you, you think about it, Colin, he's never ran an offensive set, never did a drill. Uh, but you know, he doesn't look lost. And, um, so, you know. The opportunity presents itself, you know, it's, it's next man up. You know, I don't know how the game is going to present itself. I don't know if, you know, we're in foul trouble or what, 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 what we, may ha we may have, but, you know, everybody, everybody is ready to go. John Del Bianco. Bruce, where's the vocal leadership come from on the players this week? You know, given all they've all they've encountered over the last month and a half, who would you say has really stepped up? I know, I know Frank has always mentioned Jermaine, but, uh, has anyone else really stepped up and really made a statement on the court during practice with you around? Yeah, older guys, you know, I mean, A.J. Lawson uh, stuck out to me the most. Uh, he, he's been very, very vocal. You know, Jermaine is, Jermaine is that, that, that guy. And Justin Minaya has, 
has spoke out and he's, you know, they, they're all excited and they, you know, Bruce, we got your back and we, we're going to, you know, we, we're going to get this done and, and they, their spirits lift my spirits uh, given the circumstances of, of the game, you know, you think about, you know, the virus itself and how it affects everybody. And when you, when you talk about, you know, your leader uh, being down and, and, and now you got to step up for him. So we have to one manage our emotions, but those guys are excited for, for me and, and they help me flow through practice because of the way we are, you know, um, and the way we do things, coach, you know, coach, I talked about it yesterday, but coach empowers us as coaches. Uh, he doesn't just, you know, run the practice and we don't do anything. He gives us ownership of practice. So, uh, so when we do breakdown drills, when we do scouting reports, uh, when we do film, you know, we, we take ownership of, of that role and that assignment. So that's where the respect level from our players, you know, is engaged with us and it helps us on a day-to-day -day basis. And so now with this circumstances, our guys have, have been vocal, been and, and especially AJ, uh, Jermaine, and uh, Justin Minaya, they've been really, really adamant about getting the job done. Mitch? Uh, to either of you, are you starting to have any trouble keeping up with all these trades? I mean, how do you differentiate uh, all the trades you have on the roster at this point? That's Bruce's problem right now. I <laughs> Ask me. Ask me next week. I haven't had to deal with so many trays. You know, we got a Trey Vaughn, a Jay Vaughn, a Trey this, a Trey that, a Trey here. They all spell their Trey name differently. It, it's That's Bruce's problem this week. He's got to manage uh, that problem on the bench when he's yelling Trey and like nine different guys in answer. Yeah, that's that's been a, that's been a struggle already. You know, it's Trey. Which one? Which one are you talking about? You know, so. Uh, it's about to be it's about to be nicknames in, 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 a, in a while. It's about to be a nickname for every last one of them.